Hey everybody, simple question for you. Who doesn't love traveling? Well, I sure do, and I've been to a lot of different countries, but there's one that will stick with me forever, India. Like I said, I'm pretty well traveled. I like to go abroad at least once a year, so I've got a lot of trips under my belt. But when a friend told me that I just have to see India, well, that's exactly what I did. I went in September, the last month of the summer monsoon. It was pretty dry and sunny, but with short rains here and there. The perfect weather for a traveler, if you ask me. Being the confident and well-experienced globetrotter that I am, I went there prepared, and I thought I was ready for anything. Boy, was I wrong. The colors, the contrasts, the pace, the people, everything hit me like a ton of bricks and didn't let go even when I was already back home. As soon as I stepped out of the airport, I felt dizzy. It could have been the heat, the jet lag, or the hunger in my belly. I assumed it was the latter, so I decided to head out for some authentic Indian food as soon as I'd throw my bags in my hotel room. Now, the food there deserves a big shout out. First of all, Indians eat very little meat. In fact, they have the lowest meat consumption per person in the world. Most of their dishes are vegetarian, and meat is replaced with soy meat. This is mostly because 80% of the population is Hindu. Probably like you, I'd always heard that Hinduism requires a strictly vegetarian diet, but that's not the case. It's just because they believe not eating meat minimizes the hurt they bring to other living beings. That's definitely one of the things I learned during my travels, and I was pleasantly surprised. Another thing about food in India is that it's all heavily spiced. That comes as no surprise, really since India is well known across the world as the biggest spice producer and exporter. But there's one region that stands out exclusively in this regard, the state of Kashmir. It's home to the most valuable spice ever, saffron. Sure, this flower isn't unique to India. It also grows in Iran and Spain. Kashmir, however, produces the highest quality and the most expensive saffron in the world. The town of Pampur is literally built around saffron fields. There are actually three varieties cultivated there. There's mongra, the most expensive one, that costs about $1,600 a pound. Then you've got lacha, which, interesting enough, is less pricey at $1,000 per pound. Yet saffron farmers say it's the purest. And finally, there's zarda. It's the cheapest, but only compared to other varieties, because $250 a pound isn't exactly what I call cheap. Anyway, India's spice game is definitely on point. So, I found a good place to eat, and as soon as I saw the menu, I remembered that Indian is also famous for its large variety of teas, or as the locals call it, chai. You should see the sheer number of options. I never thought there could be that many types of tea. If you're a tea drinker, I'm sure you know Darjeeling and Assam, but have you ever heard of Karnataka or Kangra? Does Munar ring a bell? I don't blame you. I had no idea that these kinds exist either, and those are just the tea producing regions. There's even more once you get into the types of chai by adding particular spices and herbs. Take, for example, masala chai, which is made with cinnamon, ginger, cloves, and herbs. I personally fell in love with butter tea. It's so thick and creamy, mmm, I could drink it by the gallon. Basically, you take tea leaves, some butter, hot water, and salt. Mix it all up and thank me later. With a full belly and plenty of chai pumping through my veins, I was ready for some sightseeing. I landed in New Delhi, so I spent the rest of the day walking around and taking in all the sights. Whenever I go abroad, I like to carry a little phrase book in the local language. Well, if you ever find yourself in India, you're gonna need a really big book because there are actually 22 officially recognized languages there. English is among them, so I was okay just sticking to that. But those 22 official languages are just a drop in the huge linguistic ocean of the country. By different accounts, there are from 122 to 300 major languages spoken in India, as well as up to 1,600 lesser known ones. Basically, if you travel from one town to another, you'll hear people talking a different language. And if you happen to go to another state, you can forget everything you might have learned in your previous location. How they manage to communicate with each other is still beyond me. New Delhi was awesome. I wish I could talk more about it, but I had a lot to see. I did find time to take a train up to Amritsar and see the Golden Temple. Ah, how do I even begin to describe it? The whole thing is covered in gold and sits in the middle of a huge pool of water. 
This is where the tradition of langur takes place. Langur is a vegetarian meal that's given to any and everyone who comes to the temple, regardless of their background or beliefs. Just imagine, the Golden Temple provides a free meal to over 50,000 people a day. And on special occasions, it can feed up to 200,000. I got a free meal too, and it was really delicious. You can volunteer there as well. I did just that because I was in so much awe about the place, I didn't want to leave. What I actually regret is that I didn't get to see the Kumbh Mela in action. It's one of the greatest celebrations of India, and apparently it's a sight to behold. In 2011, so many pilgrims gathered in one place that the whole congregation of 75 million people was even visible from space. This year, it's taking place from January until early March, so if you've seen it with your own eyes, just know that I'm so jealous. In fact, whatever India does, it does it on a huge scale. For example, it has the largest number of post offices in the world. Wherever you go, you'll stumble upon one literally on every corner. The irony of this is that it doesn't really help the situation with delivery times. One Indian guy told me it's totally normal to wait for your package to be delivered in two weeks' time, even if it was sent from a nearby town. But hey, patience is a virtue. But it doesn't stop there. India places third in terms of the number of Guinness World Record holders, the world's fastest nose typer, the most expensive wedding ever held, and the most selfies taken together are just a few of the bizarre world records held in this country. What else? The largest railroad network in the world? Check? Well, almost, since the United States does technically have more. But anyway, India has built over 3.5 million miles of railroads, which, considering the smaller size of the country, still means easier transit within and between different locations. With that in mind, it shouldn't really be a huge surprise that Indian Railways is also the largest employer in the world. It has over a million employees. And considering the country's extensive railway network, these people are scattered throughout India, from the smallest villages to the biggest cities. The number of jobs grows every year, so it looks like you could always get a job there if you're looking for employment in India. Anyway, what can I say about my final impressions? I was blown away and I seriously didn't want to leave this fascinating place. Visiting it was like going to a whole new world for me. I tried to get as many souvenirs as I could, but I almost forgot one important thing. If you ever go there, by the way, you'd better remember it too. No one is allowed to take India's national currency in or out of the country. It's actually against the law, so make sure you change your money before you cross the border. I almost made this mistake, but a friendly local told me to exchange my rupees at the airport. And off I went, headed back home with my suitcase full of exotic stuff and my head pulsing with impressions. Can you tell me anything else about India that I missed? I'm definitely going to go back, so leave me some recommendations down in the comments too. And if you enjoyed hearing my story, then give this video a like, share it with your friends, and hit the subscribe button to join me on the Bright Side of Life.